presented by the Colgate Palm Olive Feed Company, makers of Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair. And Ajax, the foaming action cleanser. And now, the Tony Martin Show. To think that you love me makes my future look strong. I swear by stars above me, I'm gone if I don't feel like writing a song, a song about you, music and words about you, lovely you. Let me sing our praises for, let me dream our praises for. Thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to you, you, and you for having me back on the Colgate Comedy Hour. At this time, 
I'd like to present a gentleman who I know you've enjoyed many, many times in the past. He's a very dear friend of mine. I'd like you to give him a nice welcome to the Colgate Comedy Hour, Mr. Fred Allen. <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tony, when I heard that you were going to have this show tonight, uh, my friend, I was really worried. Well, uh, why were you worried, Fred? Well, I knew that you could take care of the singing and all of the artistic business, but something told me that you were going to need a comedian. You mean you've never heard me do comedy? Oh, I have heard you do comedy, and that is what told me that you were going to need a comedian. Well, I got busy right away, right away, Tony. I tried to get Jerry Lester for you. Jerry Lester? Jerry Lester. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that a name you just dreamed up? Oh, no. Jerry Lester really exists. You've seen Jerry Lester, a little short fellow with double-breasted teeth. <laughs> He looks as though his tonsils are yelling fire and his teeth are all trying to get out of his mouth. At the same time. <laughs> You've seen Jerry. The little fella goes, George! And then he goes like that and he puts it. <laughs> Fred, he, he's very funny. Well, he's not quite that funny, Tony, but he really is funny. Well, I'll tell you, Fred. I just isn't stole this whole thing there. I know. <laughs> tell me something, Fred. Isn't there a fellow on television named... Uh, Milton... Uh, uh, Milton... Milton Burl. Burl, that's Milton it. Milton Burl. Yeah. Took you some time to think of it, Yes, didn't? quite a while. Well, uh, you couldn't get Milton, Tony. He has just signed a new contract for 75 years with NBC. <laughs> 75, 75 years. years with NBC. Tell me something. Does, uh, does, uh, does Milton Burl have an option? Does NBC have an option on his services after the well, 75 years? I think it's mutual at the end of 75 years. <laughs> but uh, it's the greatest contract ever signed by a comedian, Tony. If Milton Berle dies at the end of 70 years, NBC has to keep his body on television for five more years. Tell me, Fred, how can a body have a television show? Who will know? People will think it's Ed Sullivan. They won't. <laughs> but, but, Fred, who am I going to have here for a comedian? Well, how about, uh, how about a physical comedian, uh, Dagmar? No! Dagmar's a little too physical. A little too physical. Right? Well, I tell you, instead of having the show start with comedy, Tony, how about having a ballet? That would certainly be a novelty in television. And I have a ballet uh, uh, master here with me this evening. Senor? Senor? <laughs> Tony? This is just warming up. This I gives see. you an idea. If it gets hot, you smell lard burning. <laughs> Tony, <laughs> this is Senior Fafel Ricochet, Tony. He's the uh, official ballet master for the United Nations. I see. Senior Farfel. Yes. Nice, uh, does the senior speak English, Fred? Marshall Plan. <laughs> that gives you an idea. Well, the senior has a great ballet that would be very good to open the show. You, you remember An Afternoon of a Fawn? Yes, I do very well. Well, the senior does a ballet called Weekend with a Buzzer. As the curtains open, the senior comes on from this side of the stage carrying eight pounds of raw meat. He gets to the center of the stage, and from the other side, a buzzard flies on. And the buzzard and the senior, with the raw meat, do an adagio dance. Well, sir, as the curtain closes, first the meat comes out and takes a bow, then the, the, <laughs> the buzzard fly, flies on with the two weak claws in its contract and takes it. Brings the senior on for a bow. <laughs> that's just a, that's only prologue. You can imagine what follows. Well, Fred, I tell you, I, I don't think that the bow. I, so, Tony, don't say another word. Something tells me that you you are not impressed with the senior. Not very much. Well, how about having some news flashes in the uh, 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 open the program? Well, news flashes have been done to death, Fred. Well, I... uh, not 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 a thing like this. Last week, you know, the Metropolitan Opera Company announced that next year, the, uh, the Metropolitan is going to produce little operas for television, and they will be commercially sponsored. So next uh, fall, when you tune in your television set to see an opera that's sponsored, you may see something like this. <laughs>
Tony, what do you think? Well, you got that, fearful... That whistle, at least you'd have 200 dogs in the audience <laughs> right away. Yeah. You've got fearful ricochet, which I can't think of very much. Yeah. And you've also got this opera bit. Fred, I don't think these news things... You think it's a little too much. corny for you, Yes, huh? they are, Fred. Well... Isn't there anything you can do on television that you've never done before? Well, I do have a little jam I was hoping to do in Tiffany's window in Later Life, Tony. <laughs> but I will do it for you tonight. It's a, an impression of the Siamese twins playing clarinet. But, of course, you'll have to help me with it. Well, what do I have to do? Well, first, we'll need two clarinets. Well, that can be arranged. Hoopla. Oh, hoopla. Oh, say. Oh, this television takes oh. care of hats. And oh, clarinets. yes. The Latin. Let, let's sound an A. For All that. right. Fred, <laughs> I think sounds I... like a G. Well, I used to be a G man, and I carry it over. <laughs> I just heard the door slam in Carnegie Hall as we blew that <laughs> note there. Say, Fred, uh, why don't we do something? You know, Portland and my wife, Sid, went to the, the ballet the other night, and they heard... Oh, say, a duet. You and I yeah. a duet. I'll, I'll tell you what. We right. will do a duet. I will start the song, yeah. and when I stop, you will take the subsequent notes. Oh, I'll like be... That? I'm alerted. Yes, well, I'm ready fine. for it. Here we go. <laughs> do it. It's ready? a duet, of course. Yes. That's understood. All right. Yes. Are you ready? I'm certainly ready. <laughs> Late. Well, I know you didn't do <laughs> Fred, do I have to say it? Tony, please don't. <laughs> yeah, this is the first time, really, I have ever played a duet in public. Well, I... Fred, I want to tell you... I've heard a lot of clarinet players. That's the most sterling rendition I've ever heard. You really You've been practicing. Oh, yes. I used to play with Kusevitsky, you know, years ago. Is that so? Oh, yes. Uh, did you play with Kusevitsky in the uh, Philadelphia Symphony? No, in a backyard in Brooklyn. We were children together <laughs> over there. He was musical as a boy. He had his yo-yo on a G-string, as I recall, Kusevitsky. <laughs> well, say, now that you played something for the music lovers, how about playing something for the great Mel Torme set? The Sears Roebuck crowd. Well, How about something for that? <laughs> I think that would be very good. What would you like to play? Uh, my heart cries for you. Well, I think we could really execute that. Uh, we can mash it if we get us between it. <laughs> I, it's probably an executive who walked through a wrong door. That's always happening here at NBC. And the executives are showing up on the programs and slowing the whole thing up. Uh, it's very apparent that you don't like the way we're playing our clarinet. I sense so that. So if you can do any better yes. here. Take mine, too. I just happen to have one with just me. Just happen to just, have Well, if you happen to have your own, you are on your own. <laughs> Play something. You might as well tell the folks who he is, Fred. Ladies and gentlemen, this innocent bystander who showed up here with wearing a coat with a built-in clarinet happens to be a member of Eddie Condon's great jazz organization downtown, Mr. Peanuts Hucko. Peanuts. <laughs> well, Peanuts. <laughs> Venus, I know you have to get on down to Condon's. We have to get off into the wings. I have just the way to go. Good.
Use Ajax. Boom, boom. Colgate's new Ajax cleans all bathroom surfaces up to 50% faster. Use Ajax, boom, boom. the foaming cleanser. Gets things clean just like a whiz. You'll stop paying the elbow tax when you start cleaning with Ajax. So use Ajax, boom, boom. the foaming cleanser. Floats the dirt right down the drain. Ajax leaves no gritty cleanser scum in tub or sink. So use Ajax, boom, boom. the foaming cleanser. Gets things clean just like a whiz. Ajax, the new scouring cleanser, foams as it cleans. Ajax cuts grease faster than any other leading cleanser. Ajax polishes with half the effort. Mmm, and it smells good, too. So use Ajax. I'm sure you will discover, as I have, that Ajax cleans kitchen sinks, pots and pans, and bathtubs with half the effort and twice the speed of any other leading cleanser. Get two cans, one for the kitchen and one for the bathroom. Ajax. The Foaming Cleanser. Hey there, stop. Yep, come here now. I'll come right out on it. Now, I've told you at least 20 times you can't go in there. Look, here's his picture. I just want him to autograph it for me. Gee. Tony Martin. Now, what do you girls see in Tony Martin? He's so wonderful, don't you think? Well, I tell you what. He usually comes out of the hotel just about this time. He's probably upstairs dressing right now. So you can wait for him if you want to, but you'll have to sit right over there. Oh, thanks. And don't bother me anymore. Now, why aren't you in bed? Because... Well, honey, it's been 20 minutes since you should have been in bed. Now, why don't you go to bed, sweetheart? Go on, darling. All right, Daddy, I'll go. Good. On one condition. Oh, one condition. There's always a condition. Now, what is it now? You know what. That's what I was afraid of. You better take your front row seat. If they made me a king, I'd be but a slave.
Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Martin. Oh, good afternoon, Tim. It's a nice day. It certainly is, sir. Oh, Daddy! Yeah. I, I meet Mr. Martin. Oh. I guess I was daydreaming. You were? I dreamt that you were my daddy. You dreamt I was your daddy? Uh-huh. Well, tell me, what kind of a daddy was I? You were a wonderful daddy. Well, you know something, darling? What I'd do if I was your daddy? What? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now, one of the brightest stars of the current season is the glamorous leading lady of Affairs of State. She, besides winning an Oscar for her outstanding performance in pictures, I would like to introduce to you Miss Celeste Holmes as she sings, A Fella Needs a Gal. A Fella Needs a Gal. I'm right on the dot. This is the first time I've ever been out on a blind date. I got her number at the Lonely Hearts Club. And with my luck, she'd probably have no teeth and be wearing bifocals. He'll be here in exactly one minute from now. <laughs> I've never been out on a blind date before. <laughs> oh, his voice sounded so wonderful on the telephone. I'm sure he's going to be tall and handsome and loud. <laughs> Pardon me, were you expecting a certain party? Uh... Well, yes, I was. Have you seen him? Well, I'm the party. I, I'm sorry, I should have warned you. You know, if you look at me gradually, it isn't such a shock. Oh. It helps a lot. Oh, I see. Well, I, I was expecting a, a taller one. Well, if we get well acquainted, I'd be willing to wear wedgies. They'll make a big difference. What were you expecting? Well, I, uh... Am I a letdown? No, to me, you are splendidly potential. It seems that I approximately know you from someplace. Well, now, let's see. I was Miss Alaskan Crab at the seafood show last year. Miss Alaskan Crab? No, I missed the seafood show. I didn't see that. And um, I made a personal appearance at the Fulton Fish Market. The Fulton Fish Market, that was it. I was down there one hot day returning an eel. And, uh, <laughs> Miss Alaskan Crab, you were sprawled on a mound of tartar sauce that there. Was me. 
lying in state, oh, as it lovely. were. So cool. Oh, just think, little old me, lucky little old me, out on a blind date with a celebrity from the Fulton Fish Market. Wow, yeah. you're blushing. I uh, tell me, have you ever thought about getting married? Oh yes, when Mr. Wright comes along. You know, I too have thought about cutting a canubial dido myself. Oh. Mm -hmm. I see. Well, uh, what qualities were you expecting in a girl? Well, she just has to be a girl. That's uh, all. I'm a girl. Well, of course, you're a stranger, and I would hardly take a stranger's word for a thing like that. <laughs> well, soon maybe I'll be uh, less of a stranger and more of a girl. Well, I like a girl with an appetite. She has to have an appetite. Well, I could learn to be a glutton if it was required. And I must tell you that I am awfully dull. Oh. I like to sit home at night and listen to the radio. Oh, I like the radio. I like uh, Tallulah Bankhead. I like Tallulah when she sings. <laughs> Tallulah when she sings? Yes. Yeah, oh, Tallulah's sing. voice. It sounds like a man pulling his foot out of a bucket of yogurt. <laughs> yes. I have two gallons of her records at home. They're really in hot weather. They give you something, I must say. <laughs> well, you know, to me, life is like television. Really? You wake up every morning hoping it's going to get better. And it does. Well, don't be discouraged. You know, in the world, there's a boy for every girl and a girl for every boy. Now, you can't improve on an arrangement like that. Oh, I don't want to improve on it. I just want to get in on it. Well, don't be over-anxious, Myrtle. Myrtle? My name is Hortense, Hortense, Harvey. Harvey, my name is Clyde. Clyde? With a small K, yes. Oh. Well, well, aren't you Bryant 947 Gimmel 3? I'm not 47 Gimmel anything. Aren't oh. you, uh, aren't you, uh, Rugby oh, Ru 4? Oh, no, not Rugby. You're kicking a number around. No, oh, no. Oh, yes, I certainly am. No, no that's... Here we are, just a couple of wrong numbers. We sure are. Well, that's not unusual in, in the... Well, it's in... awfully nice to have met you accidentally. Well, likewise, I am sure. <laughs> and now that I have auditioned... Uh, perhaps we can get to be friends. Here is my, my real number. Oh, Manhattan is one, four, four, three, three. My favorite number. Really? Yes. Yeah. If you ever need a friend, I'm the end. You have my number. If you're ever in a mess, S-O-S. -S. If you ever feel so happy you land in jail, I'm your bail. It's friendship. Friendship, just a perfect blendship. When all their friendships have been forgotten, ours will still be hot. If you're ever up a tree, look for me. If you ever lose your teeth when you're out to dine, borrow mine. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. When other friendships have been forget, ours will soon be it. Da -da 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 -da. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be alarmed. I have not returned to sing an encore. I, uh, I had a request not to sing an encore. I'm just here to ask you to join me, and let's peek into the kitchen of a small apartment across town, if you will. <laughs> Use Ajax for foaming cleansers. Float the dirt right down the drain. Let's go, Nancy. If we're going to get our shopping done this morning, you'd better leave your sink till later. Oh, I'll be ready in a jiffy, darling. You see, I clean my sink with Ajax Cleanser. Say, everyone's talking about Ajax Cleanser. Is it really that good? Oh, it certainly is. You know, it's the fastest and easiest cleanser I've ever used. It cleans twice as fast and twice as easy as any other leading cleanser. Mmm, it's got a nice fragrance, too. It sure has. Use Ajax 
the foaming cleanser. Float the dirt right down the drain. Just look how Ajax foams. And you know, it polishes as it cleans, too. You just turn on the water, and the Ajax foaming action floats the dirt and the grease right down the drain. da da dum da dum da da dum dum da dum da 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 dum and just look at your sink. It looks so clean. And it feels clean. It is clean. Ajax clean. Halo, everybody. Halo Shampoo presents the real inside story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Young lady, you've eaten all of Junior's porridge. And busted his chair. And slept in my bed. Of course. I'm supposed to. I'm Goldilocks. She's not Goldilocks. Her hair isn't pretty. <laughs> Let's wash it and find out. Not with that. Soaping doll's hair. Halo glorifies it. Because Halo shampoo's not a soap or a cream. So it can't leave dulling soap film. Gee, look at the suds. If she's really Goldilocks, Halo shampoo will soon prove it. Now, let's take a look. It, it is Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Halo, everybody, halo. Halo is the shampoo that glorifies your hair. So, halo shampoo, halo. Remember, soaping dolls' hair. Halo glorifies it. Leaves it fragrant, dandruff-free, and wonderfully easy to manage. So, halo, everybody, halo. Halo shampoo, halo. Believe me, bears aren't the only people who admire lovely hair. Take my advice and glorify your hair with America's favorite shampoo, Halo shampoo. <laughs> My name is Rudy Dragonet. I'm the greatest crooner that ever lived. Twenty years ago, my recording of Chinatown, My Chinatown was number one in the hit parade. I was the toast of the town. Tonight, I get the chair. What am I doing here? I planned the perfect crime. Something went wrong. <laughs> what was it? I remember the day I decided to kill J. Gaffney Fink. I was in a gay mood. I had been rehearsing a song in the yard. I often sang in the yard to give the birds a treat. I put my megaphone down. I was going to commit the perfect crime. I could take no chances. I checked every detail. The window. The chair. I placed my gun on the table. Everything was in order. I rang for my houseboy, Chung. You ring, Mr. Dragonet? Yes, Chung. In a few moments, Jay Gaffney Fink, the president of Checker Records, will be here. Very good, sir. Now, Chung, when Fink gets here, I want you to go into the garden and look through that window. Chung do. Chung, I'm going to kill Jay Gaffney Fink. Oh, dirty work. Yes, dirty work. Now, when the police get here, I want you to tell them you were looking through that window. You saw Fink come in, place his briefcase on the table, pick up this gun, and shoot himself. You understand? Chung understand. Very well. At last, I was ready to commit the perfect crime. Chung was my alibi. I knew I could depend on Chung. There was that messy little affair on Mott Street he'd rather I didn't mention. Three o'clock. Jay Gaffney Fink would soon arrive. The door. He was here. My hands were trembling. Steady, Rudy. I'll see who's at the door, Mr. Dragonette. Gad. I had forgotten Miss Holmes, my secretary. I thought she had gone for the day. 
Well, it was too late to turn back. Mr. Dragonet, Mr. J. Gaffney Fink, president of Checker Records, to see you. Rudy, it's good to see you again. Hello, Frank. Sit down. Now about my record. I, uh, I have it right here, but... Uh... Give me that record. Rudy, are you crazy? Put down that gun. The perfect crime had been committed. Quickly wiping off my fingerprints, I placed the gun in Fink's hand. There were footsteps in the hall. Mr. Dragon, have I heard a shot? Yes, I know. Mr. Fink, he's dead. Yes, suicide. Call the police. Right away. I'll take this water with me in case I faint. I laughed as I turned on my shortwave radio and heard the police call. Calling all cars, calling all cars. Attention, Detective One Long Pan. Foul play at the home of Rudy Dragonette. Report at once, calling Halo One Long Pan. And Jack Whiting, hello to you. Hello, little Colleen, oh, hello. Hey, hey, hello, shampoo, hey, 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 hello. <laughs> A detective one long pan hello everybody hello long pan excellent voice tonight singer like chinese pelicomo chinese pelicomo oh. <laughs> all right sam who are you who are you mr tall dark and greasy hair my name is rudy dragonette and i live here very good uh, mr rudy dragonette long pan to solve a crime no time at all come on wake up wake up charlie wake up maybe grill you later Maybe grill later. That's the body. Oh, who, 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 who is the body? Formerly J. Gaffney Fink. Oh, very good. Two men in room, only one man alive. Long panel as you, Mr. Nudie Waggy Sweat, for murder, Mr. J. Gaffney Fink. Oh, don't be a fool. Mr. Fink committed suicide. Oh, suicide, silly story, suicide. Call the police, Mr. A whole lady also involving case. Long pen, her shale affair. Don't be a fool. Oh. That's Miss Holm, my secretary. You step a little closer, baby. Long pen to give you faster flisk. Long pen to give you faster flisk. <laughs> oh! You, you try to escape a drowning and not to work with a longer pen. You, you face up, Mr. Holm. You, Mr. Dragonette's secretary, what exactly are duties? Well... Miss Holm does my fan mail. Oh, you have a female to do a mail. Yes. Oh, ho, 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 Long pen to make a joke. Long pen make a boo-boo. Long pen... Oh, long pen Chinese Sammy Levinson. Chinese Sammy Levinson. Uh, Mr. Holm, confidentially, every day, how, 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 how many fan letters you answer, Mr. Fagonet? Well, frankly, long plan. There haven't been very many flan letters lately. Oh, no. You see, Rudy used to be the number one crooner in the United States. Oh, and then when Carmen Lombardo's voice came across America, why, Rudy was finished. Oh, you, 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 you come clean, Mr. Holm. You tell Long Pen how Mr. J. Faffney Blink become cops. What happened? <laughs> Well, you see, it was this way. I was out in the kitchen trying to overtake a couple of raisins that had just walked out of the coffee cake. Thank you. And then I heard a shot. Thank you. And then I came running into the living room, and then I saw Mr. Mr. Fink, just oh. as you see him now. Oh, dead, he. Yes, dead. Yes, it's a pure case of suicide. Oh. Now, Pan, if you're leaving, you can use the back door. Not so fast, Mr. Ludie Dragonette. First, long pen examine body, routine procedure. Long pen always, ho oh, ho, oh, you see, in Mr. Flinker's hand. What? Hey, the wallower. The wallower? Hey, the wallower, you see, the wallower, the wallower. <laughs> oh, you bad boy, oh, bad boy. Long pen unless you for murder, Mr. J. Gaffney Wink. I have a perfect alibi. Ooh. Yes, I have an eye, an eye that's so an eyewitness. Oh, who is an eyewitness? My eyewitness is Chung, my oh, houseboy. Chung! You call him, Mr. Dragon. Yes, Chung. I want you to tell this man. Chung! Oh, 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 o
You two know each other? Oh, a Chong and Longa Pan go to school together. C C and Y. <laughs> to the table down at Lumpong. To our friends we love so well. Blah, blah, blah. Very good. Concept finish. Long Pan resume a business. Uh, Long Pan not convince alibi. All right, Chung. Tell this poor man's Martin Kane Ooh. exactly what happened. Long pan a check on the Chung. Long pan make a mental note. Chung go in garden, go in through a window. Oh. Mr. Fink come in living room. Very good. Mr. Fink put briefcase on desk. Very good. Mr. Fink pull out gun, commit suicide. Oh. Yes, Long pan, that's my alibi. Oh, holy smoke, a chong, a chong, a see plenty through window. You bet. Oh, chong, chong, clever kiddo. Chong, a peeking tom. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> long pan to make an ad lib, long pan make an ad lib, peeking tom. Oh, long pan funny bunny must go on radio, must have own program like a salmon spade, private, uh, private fry, private <laughs> fry. <laughs> Let me see. You, uh, you will face up, Mr. Mr. I can't fess up. I tell you, I didn't kill Jake Gaffney Fink. I had no motive. That's no right. motive. Mr. Fink only came here to help Ruth. That's Ooh. right. You see, when I heard those old records like Abba Dabba Honeymoon Abba Dabba. and Four Leaf Clover being revived, Abba Dabba. I thought Fink would come here Ooh. and let me revive my record of Chinatown, Ooh. my Chinatown, Ooh. and we could make a fortune. Ooh. Yes, and then Rudy would make a comeback. That's oh, right. Hey, this record, this record here, you say, this record. Give me that record. Oh. Not so fast, Mr. Luda Dragon, there. Longer pen. Too a nimble for you. You see, not too fast for long a pan. Forget. Oh, uh, you see. Oh, motive queer as crystal. You kill Mr. Fink. Mr. Fink double cross a you. You see, this elected not looted dragonette. Label say Chinatown, my Chinatown. Sing Bing Crosby. <laughs> you fess up, Lude. I can't fess up at all. Oh. I didn't kill Jake after Frank. Oh. Chung saw everything through the window. Chung see nothing through the window. You follow Long Pan. You see, on the window, one window, Venetian blind. To look through Venetian blind, must see through straight the clock. You see, Chung, China boy. China boy have slanted eyes. Impossible, slant <laughs> eyes, see through straight back with Venetian blind. <laughs> Alibi, no good, perfect crime, not the perfect. I confess, oh, Long Oh, give pan. up, give up. Might oh, well Long give up. Pan, you're too much for me. Oh, Confucius say, man who used Venetian blind for alibi, she the character. Let's go, Mr. Killadilla. Oh, go. don't lock me Who's up, Long Pan. Who's Please thou? don't lock me up. I have a proposition. Oh, a proposition? Yes, oh, Long oh, Pan. Good. Why don't the three of us do the record of Chinatown, my Chinatown? Oh, three. We'll make a fortune. Oh, three, make a trio like Mr. John, Mr. Charles, Mr. Tommy. That's right. Oh, Are you with me? Very good, good. How about you, Miss Holmes? Oh. Anything for you, Rudy. Chinatown, my Chinatown. Press up. I didn't kill Jay Gaffney Fink. You not only kill Mr. Jay Gaffney Fink, you also murder song. Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a lovely visitor from Hollywood, and welcome to New York. And hello to Colleen Gray. Hello to you, Tony Martin. And to you, and Jack Whiting, hello to you. Hello, little Colleen, hello. Hello, shampoo, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just what I want to talk about. But first of all, what are all of these pictures around here? Well, some actresses just happen to have their clippings with them. Mm -hmm. I just happen to have my pictures with me. Oh, <laughs> I get it. You've had an exciting career. And, uh, romantic, too. Oh, yes. This is a scene from Lucky Nick Kane, a picture I did on the Italian Riviera with George Raft. Mm -hmm. Incidentally, this picture opens up in New York this week. Oh, wonderful. I wear peasant clothes during most of the picture, and the baddies are chasing me over the hills, back and so forth. The, the whaties? Oh, the bad guys. Oh? 
I'm a good guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my hair looked a mess in those scenes. The hot sun, the dry winds, the harsh water of the Riviera just made havoc with my hair. Mm -hmm. And there were times when I was supposed to look pretty. Well, other women have the answer in halo shampoo. And so have I. I've shopped around for shampoos. I tried lots of them until I found that until I had halo, my hair was never the same. Now it's soft and shiny and... And it's very easy to manage. That's a fact, Colleen. Soaping your hair with even the finest liquid or oily cream shampoos hides its natural luster with dulling soap film. But Halo is not a soap nor cream. Halo glorifies your hair with your very first shampoo. Take my word for it. Use Halo, America's favorite shampoo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in these days of jet propulsion and of supersonic motion, I boarded a DC-6 one day and I flew the mighty ocean. In a matter of 22 hours, I left the DC-6. I landed in London on the Palladium stage, trying my vocal tricks. There were two weeks of clamor and glamor and then I sailed the Queen Mary back home once again. Now the queen makes the trip in four days as a rule, so I bet on her speed, and I won the ship's pool. I like rowboats, tub boats, ferry boats, loops, four decks, half decks, mizzen mass loops. But of all the ships that make for speed, that bring a thrill to me, was the race between the Natchez and the good old Robert E. Lee. Stoker. Shoveling the coal, sweat and die down in the hole. Join the throng as they stroll along, singing this rollicking song. The whistles are blowing, smoke's that showing. There's Pap and Mammy and Ephraim and Sammy on a moonlight night. You can hear them all. While the waiting bands are syncopating, what's that they're playing? That they're playing the while they're playing i'm swinging a swing it's the good ship robert e lee that's come to carry the cotton away see them shovel along watch them shovel along go get your bath girl your real bath go down to the levee i said to the levee see that shovel and wrong Waiting on the levee, waiting, just waiting, I'm waiting for the Robert E.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Colgate Comedy Hour has been presented by Halo Shampoo to glorify your hair and Ajax the Foaming Action Cleanser. Be sure to tune in again next week at the same time when Eddie Cantor will be your star. And the next week from Chicago, the Colgate Comedy Hour will bring you those two great stars, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Then the following week, Jackie Gleason will make his debut on the Colgate Comedy Hour. Now I have to welcome him as special guests, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. And four weeks from tonight, Beatrice Lilly. And now, good night for the Colgate Comedy Hour, which has been presented by the Colgate Bonola Tea Company, makers of quality products since 1806. NBC Television. Mm -hmm.